in fractions, this begins in 2020, the future is near, more access, more everyone, more everything here, May 22nd, this is our only, our story to tell, this is history, begun, this is the XFL. What is up, my friends? Welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I am your host, The Mark. And on this week's show, June Jones press conference recap. Daryl Moose Johnston joins the XFL and the super detailed explanation of the whole XFL summer showcase and so much more. So how do you get in touch with the show? You email podcast at xflnewshub.com with your MP3s or thoughts or on Twitter. Just use the hashtag XFLWIR. Cutoff time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Remember to leave us a review on iTunes. We'll read it on the show. We have our question of the week. Rank the XFL coaches from one to eight. One being top. We got some interesting comments on that from you guys. Plus next week's question. We want to talk about the quarterbacks. Talking quarterbacks. We'll get into that later in the show. So my friends, without further ado, let's just get into the week. That was the XFL. So now it is with tremendous pride that I introduce the XFL's eighth and final head coach and general manager, the man who will lead the Houston team, June Jones. Thank you uh, for that uh, kind introduction, Oliver. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, that came here today. I uh, haven't seen all the faces yet, but I'm sure I recognize uh, many that are older than me. Uh, that still uh, still doing the, what they do. So I appreciate uh, that. I'm thankful to the University of Houston for their uh, commitment to uh, to excellence. Also, i have blown away by uh, what you've uh, uh, built here since I was at SMU in just a short time. And it's been uh, I'm anxious to walk through it. I remember when you built the indoor over here. So it's it's pretty fun to see this happen in a great football town. Um, I'd like to take just a second. Uh, to uh, with Memorial Day coming up, a couple of my friends here uh, came t- today, and I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, a couple of them in particular, uh, uh, and that is uh, the U.S. Navy SEAL commander. Uh, and where where are we? Okay, over here. Uh, Mark McGinnis is his good friend, and, and uh, Rick Jocelyn, uh, two Navy SEALs. Uh, uh, Mark had over uh, 450 or 440. Uh, He's, you know, he knows the deal, but, but, uh, never lost a guy, never lost a man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> appreciate, appreciate their friendship for, for a long time. And, and that goes without saying to, to the other faces that are familiar here. You know, having lived here, uh, my daughter went to Dulles High School and, and, uh, and we, we spent five years here, uh, with the gamblers and the oilers, uh, I, I'm really excited about this opportunity. It reminds me a little bit of the USFL. Uh, and as we started talking, Oliver and I, about some of the things that the head coaches are going to do here, is finding players again. And, uh, you know, I, I, that excites me more than anything else, is finding the Ricky Sanders, finding the players that are overlooked, that can execute and play in the offense that I have, and, and giving them an opportunity to show what they can do. So that, that's, that's really a, a fun deal for me, to be full circle right back here in this town. Um, you know, just a couple comments on the fellow coaches. Uh, it's been kind of fun to follow this. Kevin Gilbride, who that name is familiar here also, uh, replaced me with the Oilers, and I recommended him for that job. And, of course, he's went on and got Super Bowl rings and excited for him. I've been talking to he. I've been talking to Mark Tressman, uh, who we competed against. I've known Mark. Mark was uh, when I was in the NFL. He got in the NFL the same time, and Kim Helton, who is a tight end right here at the University of Houston, too, told me about this guy, Mark Tressman. you got to meet him. And so he was at Steelers when I was at the Oilers. I went to the Lions. He went to Minnesota. So we competed against each other forever, but I finally got to, to really uh, get to know him and what he was about the last year and a half uh, being in Canada with him. And so that's a, that's a pleasure uh, for me to, to be here. The, the other guys I competed against uh, – uh, you know, the, the other head coaches I competed against in the NFL, Winston and, and Pep. And then uh, also Bob Stoops I followed because he runs a wide-open offense. So I always followed him. 
And, uh, of course, Hal Mummy's on his staff who coached with me and is going to be his offensive coordinator, and I coached against Hal. And that Dallas-Houston rivalry will uh, take on uh, a new a new look, uh, but it'll still be big, I can tell you that. So I'm excited about that part of it. Um, you know, the, uh, the thing that somebody asked me, you know, why are you – jumping down here and and it was a very hard decision for me because I I love my time in Canada and it's a wide open game which we're uh, uh, looking at and adopting some of those rules that make that game a little bit uh, up upper tempo uh, pace uh, I'm excited about that uh, because Mark and I are probably the only ones that are familiar with those rules so I think we got a maybe a little bit of an edge and uh, um, that's that's fun and at the same time um, you know I I, I have coached uh, uh, a bunch of different places. I've been a lot of different places, but this place right here kind of is just special to me. And it's hard to believe that I come full circle from my first pro coaching job to, to right now to be back in this city. And uh, that, that's really, really awesome. And so with that uh, said, you know, um, it was hard decision, as I said, to come. But I remember watching the thing that triggered me I've been following the XFL for two and a half, three years, but the thing that really triggered me was watching the last three minutes of the 30 for 30 that I don't even know when it was done, but I happened to watch it. And I watched the conversation between Vince and, and uh, I think Dick Ebersol at that time, and uh, I could see it in his eyes uh, that, that he was going to make this work. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of that. He's, he's obviously... Uh, a genii marketing guy and knows how to get things done. So I think the city of Houston, myself, my fellow coaches, uh, are, are, are going to be, uh, just have an unbelievable great time with the, with, uh, developing this further. So with that, um, I really, uh, I know that probably answer most of your questions as we do it individually. If you want to, I'll be here. I'll stay as long as I can. Good to see you guys. I, oh, you have one question. Well, I'd say a hybrid. The question was, I've always kind of uh, uh, tied myself to Mouse's offense, which I still do probably three quarters of what we do is originally from Mouse. But uh, I had the awesome uh, chance in Hawaii to spend the, really the last 10 years with Bill Walsh, really when he was out of football. He would come and spend a month and a half, and we'd talk football all the time. And so I, I would bring him up to my meetings and stuff, and I sat with him, had the opportunity to sit with him, and he kind of tweaked some things and said, maybe you try this. And, of course, the rest of it is really, to be quite honest, a lot of Bill's stuff. And then the tempo part of it, you know, you have to adjust to, which I really relied on, to be quite honest. Uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli, who was my quarterback, uh, and Dan Morrison, who's my, been my quarterback coach at SMU and Hawaii both, they kind of put together a tempo package that we can use uh, also. So that's kind of what, what we're going to do. All right, do you want me to do these here or just say aloha? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steph, for the lay, and, and uh, that was a very nice touch, and I look forward to, to chatting with all of you and spending a lot of time. Thank you. So there you have it. June Jones is your new XFL Houston coach. We have all eight. We'll get into your top ranking of these coaches later on in the show. Some couple little tidbits from the press conference. Oliver Luck, of course, talked about Elevate ticket sales, that partnership, the TV deal on the schedule. Then he talked about the eight city summer showcase, which we'll get later to later in the show and the events. It's basically the XFL's twist on the NFL combine coaches and scouts of all teams will be on site. It's for former NFL players. Free agents are invited. You have to have an agent. We'll get into that later. But also college players are able to work out without losing their college eligibility. But this is invite only. Just if you're some weekend warrior, I play flag football. You're not invited. You don't have an agent. We'll get into that later. Good press conference. I love that they had uh, Lays on. June Jones is a Hawaii guy. Aloha. Mahalo. And so that made me like him even more. I, I knew he coached in Hawaii. But I didn't realize he was into that, the culture of Hawaii like I am. So that's my second favorite team just because it's June Jones and the Hawaii deal. So that was cool. So there you go. Your new head coach, XFL Houston. June Jones. The XFL will be hosting summer showcases in each of its eight host cities to evaluate players for the XFL's inaugural season. We have information on about the summer showcases. So we have Dallas will be June 7th, Houston, June 8th, New York, 
June 7, 14th. Washington, D.C., June 15th. Los Angeles, June 21st. Seattle, June 22nd. Tampa Bay, June 29th. And St. Louis, July 13th. A little bit later on in the and the thing. So who will be invited to the summer showcases? It's not you, sort of. Fr- fans s- supposedly are allowed to attend to check it out. But each XFL summer showcase is an invite-only workout for players who would like to consider be considered for potential XFL opportunities. Those players would include those that have played in the NFL, alternative football leagues like the AAF, Arena Football League, those kind of things, or have recently completed their college eligibility. Players will receive an individual emails from the XFL League office with their personal invitation to a particular summer showcase with an effort to consider the player's location to the best of their ability. What will players be doing at each of these showcases? Will players arrive at each showcase in the morning of the event, register, and then they're invited to... Players will do the following. They'll get their height, weight, light combine-like athletic testing, individual position workouts, one-on-one drills, private additional workouts with XFL coaching staff as needed, provide player interviews and background information as needed, and players will receive a box lunch upon completion of the XFL Summer Showcase. So you get a lunch out of it, too. Remember, if you're invited... What is the purpose of the XFL Summer Showcase is uh, the first opportunity for XFL League office and individual XFL franchises to begin evaluating talent for the 2020 XFL season. Each Summer Showcase will allow player personnel teams to gather necessary background information and measurables uh, to on considered players, evaluate players for official XFL contracts upon completion of the summer showcase, which basically means that they will be signing some guys after this summer showcase. So we got players signed to the league, not to teams, but to the league in June. They'll begin evaluating players for coaching and personnel staff, XFL draft prep preparations, and they'll gain some accurate information and valuations of unsigned players for future XFL opportunities. If you're interesting and college players interested in attending, you must first apply and be approved before you can attend. And you can apply at XFL. Com. Daryl Moose Johnson, a former fullback for the Dallas Cowboys from 1989 to 1998, is joining the XFL. Johnson was the first fullback ever selected to an NFL Pro Bowl and a three-time Super Bowl winner. Johnston is currently it was announcer at NFL on Fox, but most notably, he was the general manager of the San Diego Commanders of the now bankrupt Alliance of American Football, the AAF. He is the first big name executive to move over from the XFL to the XFL after the AAF went out of business. He will team up with head coach GM of the XFL Dallas franchise, Bob Stoops, to help build their team in Dallas. Johnson isn't the only executive to move over from the XFL from the AAF this past Last week, Chris Thompson, the former director of football operations for the AAF's Atlanta Legends, is now the director of football operations for the XFL New York franchise, and he will work alongside newly named head coach of the NGM of the XFL New York, Kevin Gilbride. How Mummy, one of the founders of the Air Raid offense, is headed to the XFL. He will be the offensive coordinator under Bob Stoops for the XFL Dallas franchise. Now, the Air Raid offense is a run-and-shoot style offense, plays or run out of a shotgun formation and includes four wide receivers and one running back, a style that could be well-suited in the XFL. Mummy's coaching career is his 15th stop in his coaching career. Guy's been around all sorts of plays. He never really stays in any one place for more than three years. If you look at his background, his most recent coaching stop was the offensive coordinator at Jackson State. That was last year. He has coaching stops in West Texas A&M, UTEP, Copperas Cove High School, Iowa Wesleyan, Valor the state, some southeastern New Mexico state, McMurray, pit stop at SMU as the offensive coordinator before spending the next three years in Bellhaven as their program's head coach. With Bob Stoops and Mummy calling plays, XFL Dallas could be one offense to watch in the new XFL. Throw in a free agent quarterback and Texas football legend Johnny Manziel in the mix, and it could be must-see football. We reported back in April that Jamie Alonzo and Jerry Glanville were added to the Tampa staff. Well, since then, there's been no official word from the XFL, but that was until now. Officially on their Twitter, Mark Trestman has named Jerry Glanville as his defensive coordinator. So Jerry Glanville is now the defensive coordinator officially, even though we talked about it a month ago. 
the defensive coordinator at XFL Tampa Bay. There was some talk that Glanville might team up with XFL Houston head coach June Jones. Those two go way back in their days, NFL days and are friends, but it looks like Jerry will be staying in Florida. Jim Herman has left his job as linebackers coach and associate head coach with Bowling Green State University for a job with the XFL. He'll be the new defensive coordinator under Kevin Gilbride and the XFL New York franchise. Prior to Bowling Green, Bowling Green State University. He was the linebackers coach for the Colts, Giants, and Jets. He was an assistant football coach at Michigan University from 85 to 2005, including nine years as defensive coordinator from 97 to 2005. After the 97 season in which Michigan Wolverines won the national championship, Herman received the Frank Bowles Award as top assistant coach in the nation. He uh, played a college football at the University of Michigan from 1980 to 1982. A defensive guy, Working in New York, staffs are filling up. As the XFL is ramping up for the 2020 kickoff, coaching staff positions are starting to fill rapidly. So we have a list of some of the latest coaching hires by teams. XFL DC hired Tide Washington, offensive tackle and tight ends coach, Brent Battle, wide receivers and special teams assistant, XFL Dallas hired Jim Jeffcoat. He's a former defensive lineman for the Cowboys for 15 years and a Orlando Apollos from the AAF D-line coach. XFL Tampa Bay got Josh Moore, running back coach. He's a former Toronto Argonauts running backs coach. XFL St. Louis added defensive coordinator Jay Hayes, brother of head coach Jonathan Hayes, former Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive line coach. Football operations manager Jeff Bauer. He's a former scout for the Jets. Offensive line coach Brian Braswell, a former assistant line coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. In New York, they added director of player personnel Alan McCracken, a former director of football administration for the Kansas City Chiefs, and Christopher Thompson, football operations manager as well. Sports Illustrated's Dan Green wrote an in-depth feature on XFL commissioner and CEO Oliver Luck. Many topics of the XFL are covered, and it's worth a read for any XFL fan. Luck has stated in the past that quarterbacks are the top dogs in the XFL. That quarterback play is critical to the success of the league. The names of Tim Tebow, Colin Kaepernick, and Johnny Manziel came up, and here's what Luck had to say about each of them. Luck on Tim Tebow. Luck and Tebow actually had a chance run-in at the Clemson-Alabama national title game back in January. Luck said he informally gauged the 31-year-old's interest in playing football again, but Tebow reaffirmed his commitment to playing baseball. Now, Tim Tebow is currently with the New York Mets as a left fielder for its AAA team in Syracuse, and as of this writing, he has a slash line of 131. 198 and 179 with zero home runs, nine RBIs, and 34 strikeouts. Not a good sign for a 31 year old trying to make it into the majors. He batted 273 with six home runs, 36 RBIs, and 103 strikeouts in 2018 for the Mets double A team. Luck on Colin Kaepernick. Well, former 49ers QB Colin Kaepernick was on Luck's list of possible XFL quarterbacks. He reached out to Kaepernick's agent and was told the QB wanted $20 million to play in the XFL. Luck said, quote, that's a little bit out of our range. Luck on Johnny Manziel. Luck previously said he was unsure whether the XFL would welcome Johnny Manziel, but it was more of a coach's decision than anything else. Manziel recently played two games for the AAF's Memphis Express before the league folded, giving his off-the-field problems an unknown drama as to why he was kicked out of the CFL. Luck told Sports Illustrated he has, quote, softened McMahon's original hardline stance, close quote, when it comes to off-the-field issues. The policy now excludes any player for credible accusations of felonies and domestic violence. Can the XFL thrive without one of these big names? Does the league need big name players to gain a fan base? Let us know in the comments or send us an email podcast at xflnewshub.com. We'll be back with your social media stuff and emails right after this. Stay tuned. There is only one place that you can get all your XFL news. That is xflnewshub.com. We go all the way back from the beginning of time for the XFL all the way up to today's stuff where you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. All those locations to get all your XFL news. We are your number one source of XFL football news. From now all the way until February 2020, 
kickoff. So stick with XFLNewsHub.com for all your latest information. Follow us on all the social medias. That's XFLNewsHub.com. Remember it. Write it down. XFLNewsHub.com. All right, we are back. Now, next week's question is QBs the XFL should have in their draft. Now, clearly some of you will say Colin Kaepernick. Some of you will say Tim Tebow. Some of you will say Johnny Manziel. We want some other names. We're going to build a list. We'd like to have the top 10 quarterbacks that could play in the XFL. And don't be dumb and be like Brett Favre or Tom Brady or Boomer Esiason. None of that. Some guys that could legitimately play in the XFL. That's next week's question. Plus, we get a rank. We get into the ranking the XFL coaches from one to eight. One being the top. Interesting to see what you guys think about that. Plus, we got some big announcements. Hopefully, next week we got a big announcement. Something I think you guys would really like, but it has to do with us at the XFL News Hub. But we got a big announcement next week, so you want to stay tuned for that. It should be good. As long as everything goes according to plan, we should have a nice little announcement next week. On to the Twitters first. John TC1979 tweeted at us. We were talking about uh, one of the CFL coaches was worried about losing coaches to the XFL. He said, why don't the CFL merge with the XFL? Use XFL rules and the champion chain would always be America versus Canada, Great North Conference, and the Great South Conference. As much as I'm like, no, dude, we don't need that. That would be interesting. And something that I would, I, I have put my toe in the water, shall we speak, of getting involved with the CFL, doing CFL stuff. I've been interested in I'm, 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 my interest has been piqued with the CFL, especially with a lot of this crossover between the XFL s- staff coming from the CFL and the CFL has been around for a long, long time. Now, that's not going out of business anytime soon. And it's the summer. If you're a super football fan, it could be fun. We've talked about it on the show. Hamilton Tiger Cats is my team. Dan Dante Collins underscore six when he was talking about the XFL summer showcase tryout. Damn. So I'm not getting invited. S M H shake my head. No, you're not. Unless you have an agent and they know who you are, you will not be invited. We got a lot of people like messaging us like, Hey, I want to get invited. I'm, I'm starting to train. And it's like, well, I don't know. You know, if you don't have an agent and you're not already connected in some way, you're going to have to put in some work for that one. All right, on to our coaching poll. We'll start with Twitter. Fan underscore XFL has the ranking as files. Quick ranking. Hayes at number eight. Moss, seven. Zorn, six. Hamilton, five. Gilbride, four. Jones, three. Tressman, two. Stoops, one. I'm going to have to say, hmm, yeah, I, I, I'm, I will go fan underscore XFL. I think I'm with you. I think those, that probably would be my list. We appreciate the checking in. On the Instagrams, Alan Sturge Jr. said, we haven't seen a single game yet, so this question is BS. Well, that's not very nice, but of course it's fun. And Rab Rob 70 aside, I'm kind of with you on this. No game has been played, nor the rules even been placed. I guess you could rank them based on hype, though. Yeah, that's what we're just, we're just having a little fun. Alan Sturge or Z Jr., relax. So this is fun. What else would you like to talk about? Because there's not much going on. We finally have our coaches. We're having a little fun. Relax. Todd Wright, 19, 2019. He's got Stoops 1, Jones 2, Gilbride 3. Treshman should be reassigned to one of the other four cities since Spurrier is now available and is clearly the right fit in Tampa. Ooh, he wants Spurrier. All underscore about underscore them underscore Benjamins underscore. Does it matter? The XFL is going to flop harder than Vince at WrestleMania. Yikes. A little hatred on there for Vince. First of all, WWE fan is just going crazy right now over the WWE stuff. Personally, I haven't even watched it. I didn't even watch Money in the Bank. And I actually even canceled my ex- my WWE Network subscription for, for now. Because I wanted to let them know that I'm not happy with what the product is. So I canceled it right now. Because there is, when you fill out the drop-down box, there is one that you can click that says, Hey, are you upset with storylines and pro- and the product? And I said, yes, that's the only way they're going to listen. 
That's the only way they're going to listen. It's hurt. You got to hurt them in the wallet. Ratings are one thing. They can shuff that off as, well, you know, the audience is fractured. Look at us on YouTube. Bottom line, more than anything else, showing up events, clearly. But it's their network. As the network starts to sh- lose subscribers, that's going to affect their stock prices, which will make force them to make changes. Anyway. On to the Facebook. Corey sent in his list. I'm from St. Louis, and I hate to do this to my new team, but number eight, Hayes wasn't a coordinator, just a position coach, so no head coach jobs held. Seven, Winston Moss, same as Hayes. Very weak resumes. Six, Gilbride has some NFL coaching experience. Five, Pep Hamilton comes from a good coaching tree. I agree with that. Trestman has some flashes of good coaching in Canada, some flashes. He was won the Great Cup like twice for two different teams or a bunch of Great Cups. Three, Jim Zorn coaching at his old stomping grounds. He's got Zorn up a little higher. Two, June Jones. He got laid, laid at his press conference, and that puts him just under Bob Stoops. He's talking about the Lays, the Hawaiian vibe. It was very nice. And number one, Bob Stoops, best resume out of all these head coaches. And plus, now you got Hal Mummy on there too. Ah, it's going to be a force to reckon with. David. Says it won't work because Vince is just going to put Brock Lesnar in the game. Again, another hate towards the WWE product. That's not me, man. It's not me. I I have nothing to do with this. On to the emails. we got a lot of emails. First, Kenneth checking in. When he shared an article about the June Jones hiring. We appreciate that. Some University of Houston alum and a Houston native now living in Memphis. So I enjoy following all sports related to Houston, especially my Cougars and anything football related. Excited to continue following you guys on YouTube. I'm currently a subscriber. Keep up the awesome reporting and hopefully the first XFL season will be awesome. Kenneth checking in. Thanks for the email. We're out there on YouTube. We're out there on Instagram, podcast, everywhere, and some other places coming soon. What? Did I say anything about that? What? What is going on? On to the emails. Chris checking in. He says, to whom it may concern, my name is Chris Bleep. I won't put his last name. And most in the industry know me as coach. I am a scout for the Columbus Lions, Carolina Cobras, and also a few other organizations. I have a number of players. There would be outstanding candidates for new teams that are coming up next year. Please allow me to help these guys get into the next level they much deserve. I need a direct contact with your company that can send them film, blah, 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 blah. Chris, this is xflnewshub.com, not xfl.com. Go to xfl.com for details. Denzel, how do I sign up for the showcase? There's a question. Denzel, we have an article on XFL News Hub talking about it, but you have to go to X. There's actually a link for players to sign up on the article. Head over to XFL News Hub or just go to xfl.com for details. Robert, football tryouts. My name is Robert. I've had a rough upbringing and I've been waiting and training for an opportunity like this. If the XFL could respond with information on how I could register or get connected in a better way. Thank you. Again, check us out at XFL News Hub. We have an article there. Amos, assistant coaching jobs available. I was wondering if I can get an assistant coaching job. I live in the Houston area. Apparently, you're going to need to know June Jones or submit your resume over at XFL.com. Charles, coaching position. Is there a... Is there a site that allows you to send your resume to the organization for a coaching position? Yes, xfl.com. Look under the FAQ. That's how you find it. Austin, I played football in high school and was great at it. First team all district and all. I signed a letter of intent in college, but never played. I was wondering, if could I still try out for the XFL League even though I didn't play in college? Call me, email me. I'm really interested in bringing my God-given talents to a great upcoming team. Austin xfl.com or xfl news hub you'll find information on that finally nicholas our number one emailer says uh if i was a coach slash gm in the xfl i would target quality tight ends if possible a solid tight end can help the passing offense as well as a running game good linemen are sometimes hard to find so by adding a good tight end it could take some of the pressure off the o-line I'd love to see some double tight end sets. It would make sure one of the top three picks would, as a tight end, maybe even top two picks would be a tight end. Also, I'd probably run different sets like the wishbone to keep them off guard. Good linemen are hard to find, so you can help your line with a good tight end. That's where my mind would be as a coach and GM. Nicholas, checking in, dropping his knowledge. It seems like I agree with Nicholas in the fact that, yes, probably tight ends to help blocking because the lines won't be that good. But I think that the the the, the coaches are really going to want to have this wide open. You think June Jones and Hal Mummy are going to have tight ends? They're just going to have 10 wide receivers and two linemen if they could have their way. 
But thanks for the messages, everybody checking in, emailing. Remember, you can call 888-430. Oh, I don't even have a phone number yet. I got to give you guys that later. We'll work on that later. But that's it for the show. Remember, you can tweet us, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, emails, and so much more. If you want to be part of the show, email podcast at xflnewshub.com. You can follow us everywhere. We're XFL News Hub. Just type in XFL News Hub. Make your own MP3 and send us that. We want to hear your voices. I want to hear your voices on this show. Leave us a review on iTunes. We'll read it on the next show. We could really use some there. And you can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, Google, YouTube, TuneIn, and Stitcher. Anywhere, basically, you could get a podcast. If you, for some reason we're not listed on there, let us know. We'll get listed on that. That's it for this week's show. Good show. Remember, next question for the week of next week, QBs the XFL should have in their draft. We already know Johnny. We already know Colin. We already know Tim Tebow. Not Vince Young. He's like 37 years old or 31 years old. That name has been thrown out there. Give us some guys. I want to start listing some guys, just like we had list a couple weeks ago about potential guys that got signed later to NFL teams. That we're gonna we're gonna keep track of them. But I want to start tracking some of the quarterbacks now and see if we can get it right come the real draft in October. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. Mahalo. And especially to you, my man, June Jones, my second favorite team, XFL Houston, after America's team, XFL DC. But God bless, and I will see you all later. (laughs) 